that. Here we go. Um, one of the last parts here of section 7.4 we're going to take a look at it is kind of combining the geometric and algebraic um, interpretations of that dot product um, and, and kind of looking at one of the useful um, things that the dot product can do for us. So um, here's an example or a definition. This one is, is pretty important. It's not the only way to do this, but it is one of the more efficient ways. Um, it says if theta is the angle between two non-zeros, so they can't be the zero vectors, um, u and v, where zero degrees is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 180, which is meaning it should give us an answer um, that's less than 180 degrees. So you got to be careful um, which way the vectors are, are pointing. If they're pointing down, we're, we'll still get the angle in between them. Um, but just, just watch out for that. It really shouldn't make too big a deal where the vectors are. Um, there, there can't be more than 180 degrees between them. Um, but if, we're, if we actually do want to find the angle between two vectors, a little diagram here says vector u is kind of over here in quadrant two. Vector, or sorry, vector v is in quadrant two, vector v is in quadrant one. And if we want to find that angle that exists between those two vectors, and again, we'll, these will be position vectors, we can use this little formula right here. It says u dot v, or this is the dot product of u and v, is equal to the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v times the cosine of theta. So if you remember that formula, u dot v equals magnitude u times magnitude v times cosine of the angle between them. And what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to solve this formula for theta. Okay. So let's take a look at an example. We want to find the angle between two vectors. So we got two position vectors here. Vector u is 3, 4, and vector v is 2, 1. Um, I'm going to start by just making a quick little sketch. Um, looks like both of these vectors are in quadrant 1, so that'll kind of limit bar here. So we're gonna, I'm just going to look at the first quadrant. Okay. I'm going to get this scaled semi-good here. So one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I'm just going to start by drawing vectors u and vectors v. Um, the first one here looks like three, four. So we got to go one, two, three, up four. That's kind of where the terminal point of vector u is going to be. Um, our second vector is 2, 1 over 2, up 1. That's the terminal point of vector v. And if we sketch those two vectors, here's v and here's u. Okay. So now, like, like I said, there, there is more than one way to complete these problems. Um, but what we're actually going to be finding at this point is this angle right here. What is the angle that's formed between those two vectors? All right, so we had that little formula from the last page that said u dot v equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle between them. Um, and we're, we're obviously going to need to find a few things here. Um, in order to find theta, we need to know the magnitude of each vector and their dot product. So let's start with doing some scratch work here. Let's find u dot v. Okay. And remember that's just going to be u dot v is equal to a times t plus b times c, or the two x components. So we'll take 3 times a 2, we get 6. That's a times c plus b times c. That's 4 times 1 is 4. So the dot product of our two vectors u and v here is 10. Remember, you should get a real number from that, not a new vector. So we know this. Now let's find the magnitude of each one of these. Um, I'm going to make a little room here. Now, uh, to find the magnitude, remember we're going to have to go back to our little modified distance formula. Um, let's get rid of a squared plus b squared to give us the magnitude of u, and we'll do the same thing for v here. So let's calculate this one. Um, a here for vector u is 3, so the 3 squared plus b squared is 4 squared. And if we simplify that, that's 9 plus 16, which is 25. The square root of 25 is then 5. So there's the magnitude of vector u. And we also need now the magnitude of vector v. So we'll repeat those calculations here. So a is 3, b is 1. And we'll simplify. 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. Square root of 5 then is just the square root of 5. So the magnitude of v, we'll leave that as an exact answer, is square root of 5. 
So now, of this formula, we now know magnitude E, know magnitude of V. The only thing missing is the cosine of theta here, um, or the theta of that, which we should be able to find. And again, that's going to be the angle that's formed between those two vectors. So let's go ahead and do some substitution here. U dot V is 10. And now that's equal to the magnitude of U is 5. The magnitude of V is root 5 times cosine theta. And from there, if there's anything missing in theta, we should be able to solve for it. So I'm just going to start this by multiplying 5 times root 5 is 5 root 5 plus cosine theta. And let's go ahead and solve for cosine theta, just like we did when we solved our trig function. To do that, we're going to have to divide both sides by 5 root 5. And finally, we should be able to get theta here um, by taking cosine inverse of each side. Okay, so cosine inverse cancels out the cosine to give us just theta. And we'll grab our calculator here and we'll plug that in and see what we come up with. So cosine inverse of 10 divided by, careful with this, 5 square root of 5. We should get a parenthesis at least around the denominator. Um, and pulls out the root also. So those will go down to I think there's one more. And we are in degrees. This should give us our value. Perfect 26.57 degrees between there. And there is the angle again that is formed between those two vectors, u and v. So this angle right here, not to the x-axis. Okay, This is actually just the angle between the two vectors. 26.57 degrees. All right. Good luck.